Every breath we take allows us to move, speak, and live. To breathe, we take in oxygen through our respiratory system. Normally, we do this without even thinking about it. But after a traumatic brain or spinal cord injury, the way you breathe may have changed. In this video, you will learn the functions of the respiratory system and how it relates to your care. Let's start with some basics. The respiratory system is made up of three major parts, the airway, the lungs, and the muscles for breathing. Your airway consists of your nose, mouth, throat, and trachea, also known as the windpipe. Your lungs are responsible for getting air into your body. As the air passes through the trachea, it enters the lungs. This is where oxygen in a person's breath enters the bloodstream. At the same time, the waste from the blood, called carbon dioxide, is transferred into the lungs and then exhaled. Passing oxygen through the lungs is dependent on the surrounding muscles. The main breathing muscle is the diaphragm. The diaphragm muscle is just below your rib cage and under the lungs. It works like a pump, pulling oxygen into your lungs and pushing carbon dioxide out. Breathing does not depend on the diaphragm alone. There are other muscles that assist the breathing effort. These include muscles surrounding the ribs, abdominal or belly muscles, muscles in the neck, shoulders, and chest, when inhaling, the muscles in the chest, neck, and shoulders all expand the chest wall to help pull air into the lungs. When exhaling, the muscles relax and the space inside the chest gets smaller, increasing the pressure. The rising pressure helps push the air out of the lungs. The abdominal muscles also contract to help a person cough forcefully. Coughing is one of the most important things you can perform. Talking for long periods of time, laughing, singing, and yelling require active contraction of the abdominal muscles. Brain injuries can affect the parts of the brain that control or regulate breathing. Normally, the brain sends signals to the body that tell us to breathe and how often. After a brain injury, these signals may be damaged or blocked. Damage to the spinal cord can block the signals that are being sent from the brain to the respiratory system. If a person has a complete injury at C2 or above, the person is usually dependent on a ventilator to breathe. However, depending on the severity of the injury, the person may be able to breathe on their own for short periods of time using their neck and shoulder muscles. If the injury is at C3 or below, the diaphragm may still function. It just may not be fully functional. The patient may be able to breathe on their own, although their ability to take a deep breath and cough effectively is greatly reduced. There are tests your doctor may order that help determine if the diaphragm is working. In simpler terms, different injuries cause different problems. Some of these problems may be Difficulties breathing on your own. Your muscles may be too weak to take a deep breath. You may not have a strong enough cough to get mucus out of your lungs. And there may be changes in how well you can swallow. A common problem for people with brain or spinal cord injury can be too much mucus in the lungs. Mucus is produced by the body to keep the airway moist and keep bacteria and dust from going into the lungs. If there is too much mucus in the lungs, your respiratory system alerts you by having you cough forcefully to remove the excess mucus. If you are not able to cough or have a weak cough, mucus can get trapped in the lower parts of the lungs. This can cause respiratory infections, which can then lead to pneumonia. Another problem that may occur is losing the ability to swallow correctly. Not being able to swallow correctly can lead to aspiration. Aspiration is when saliva and food get caught in your lungs instead of going to your stomach. This can lead to an infection. The respiratory team at Craig has a proven plan to treat and often correct breathing issues. 
They will work with your care team to help strengthen the areas needed for an effective cough and swallow. Your doctor, nurse, and respiratory therapist can help you understand how your specific injury has affected your body. Depending on your injury, the respiratory system may no longer work correctly. You may need a machine to help you breathe. These machines are called mechanical ventilators. A mechanical ventilator works by pushing air into the lungs. The air is pushed in until it reaches a preset volume. This volume is decided by a trained healthcare professional. Once the lungs are full, the ventilator stops pushing air and the lungs will empty on their own. If a person is on a ventilator, they will have a tube in their trachea or windpipe called a tracheostomy tube, or trach for short. A trach replaces a person's nose and mouth as the way for them to breathe. A person that cannot cough well enough or get mucus out of their lungs may also have a trach tube. A trach tube stays in place until a person can cough and breathe well enough on their own. Respiratory therapists work to comfortably and successfully get people off ventilators and breathing on their own. The weaning process involves gradually reducing the level of support and time a person is connected to a ventilator. The respiratory muscles are worked and then allowed to rest and recover. This is similar to training for a marathon. Patients will wean daily, gradually reducing the support and time they need on the ventilator until they are strong enough to breathe on their own. The goal of Craig's respiratory department is to wean patients from mechanical ventilation. However, there are times that weaning may not be possible. In cases where it is not possible, our goal is to train patients, families, and caregivers on how to manage ventilator or respiratory needs in a home setting. Our respiratory therapists will plan a program specific to each person's needs Take the time to ask your care team about your specific injury and treatment plan.